sure is the email says what brings you in today. Well, I'm a busy single mom, and recently I've just been overwhelmed. I have several kids. I have six kids and three grandkids, and just super overwhelmed, and I felt like I needed to come talk to somebody. Well, it's great that you recognize you're overwhelmed. Is there anything in specific that you would like to talk about? Um, I don't know if there's anything necessarily specific, but it's just really hard being a single mom, and I'm really overwhelmed with just working and doing all the housework and, you know, making sure everybody has all the things that they need, and sometimes I just forget about me. Well, again, it's great that you recognize you're burnt out and overwhelmed. What's going on in your work, health, and children's lives that are making you feel stressed and overwhelmed? Um, at work, I actually am not that stressed, even though I have a stressful job. Um, sometimes I feel like I use work to get away from the stress of my life at home. Um, so I actually enjoy going to work sometimes because I can just get away. I'm a nurse, and so it's very stressful being there, but I can just go do my job and clock out. But then I just, I'm worried all the time about needs and bills that have to be paid and chores that have to be done and I just I don't have any help sometimes and it's just really hard. Can you give me an example of what is going on? Someone at home that's checking you out? Well I I have kids that are all different ages. I have several teenagers. Um, one is a single mom herself. Uh, one is a, about to be a senior in high school so Mom worry of all the things that are coming for senior year. Um, I have another teenager. They they both have just started driving. Um, and then I have a younger son that is very emotional because he recently lost his father um, a few months ago. And I don't know how to handle those things. So it's really just, it's, it's a lot of different things culminated. And I, I, I forget to take care of me a lot of the time because I'm always taking care of everybody else. It seems to me like you carry a lot on your shoulders dealing with all of your children and all of their needs while meeting your own yourself as a single mom. Um, when was the last time you did something for yourself once in a while? Honestly, I really don't. Um, I might occasionally just dip off and go to Starbucks on my own or I might go get my nails done or something but I really don't take a lot of time for myself I'm always the first one awake I'm always the last one to go to bed um so every day is just all about me taking care of everybody else and by the time I get to bedtime I'm so exhausted I don't even have time to think about me I just go to sleep as a mom and multiple children myself, I understand the constant worrying and feeling like you make no time for yourself at all. Let's talk about a plan where you can take better care of you while still meeting everyone else's needs. Okay. <sighs> it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to carve out the time for myself and then have that time uninterrupted where I'm not still needed. I'd say an example would be even at the end of the day and everybody's starting to go to bed and I want to take, say, a hot bath. Even if I lock my door, I have certain children in my house that will stand at my door and knock and yell, Mom, I need this. Or they'll text me while I'm in the bathtub and they need something or they can't find something or they have a question. or So I almost feel like the only time that I can do anything for myself is when everyone else is sleeping, which is almost the worst time for me to get time for myself because then I'm more tired because that's the only time I have for me. So it's kind of a vicious cycle in that sense. Do you have any suggestions where I could try to make a better plan to take care of myself? Have you considered talking to the child and saying, hey, I've had a rough day all day. I just need some time for myself. <clears throat> and I would like to take a hot shower. 
I think for the most part, most of my children would respect that. But my youngest is nine, and he's a very needy child by himself. <clears throat> um, so he himself doesn't have a lot of boundaries. So even if I told him that, he would not, he doesn't care. If he wants, if he needs time on his phone to play Roblox, or he wants time on YouTube that I have to approve, he's still going to text me the purpose of what I tell him to do. <laughs> so... It's really hard, especially with him, to do that. Have you considered times where you have your phone on Do Not Disturb, or? I don't put my phone on Do Not Disturb, and that's one thing that maybe I could implement, but I, it makes me feel when I put my phone on Do Not Disturb that then I'm unavailable to my kids. And even though I'm trying to take time for me, I still feel like that's me shutting them out, which is, we're in the same house, but it still makes me feel bad to put my kids on Do Not Disturb, if that makes sense. 20 minutes to yourself on Do Not Disturb while taking a shower is not a crime. So, you could easily do that, 20 minutes. It's so hard, though, because I feel like if I'm the only one they have, so if they need something and I'm not available, then it's... That's not okay for me to do. So it's like me having to give myself permission to do that. But if it's the end of the day and you want to take a quick, hot shower, 20 minutes, do not disturb, and everyone's needs have been met, then you could easily yeah. try do not disturb while you're taking a shower. And then you can yeah. easily take your phone off do not disturb after the shower. Just You're right. It's just a battle I have within myself being a single mom, and I'm the only one they have, so everything that happens with everybody always, it's so, I self-internalize it, like it's my fault, I could have done this, I could have changed this, I could have done better at this, just mom guilt. Is there anyone else in the house that they could maybe run to while you're taking a shower? Maybe the older kids, but those older kids also, you know fight with each other or antagonize the younger ones or just in general don't get along with each other some days. So I still feel like the referee, you know, the nurse, the mom, the so, the problem solver, I like everything to everybody all day, every day. So Okay. Okay. I understand the stress and where the stress comes from. Is there anything else that you feel like it maybe stresses you out? Um, I mean, life in general is hard. <laughs> like I said, my job is stressful, but I can compartmentalize that to just, I go to work and I come home. I, I'm positioned now with my career where I just really go to work and come home. I don't do anything extra for my job. So, and that's kind of my time away and my adult conversations with my co-workers and friends there so um, that's my time away but also lately I have been trying not to go to work even though it stresses me out in a different way being less financially stable because I'm going to work some days but then sometimes we're slow and I just don't go and then I don't pay myself because I don't have any and I don't have any paid time off so I take a day unpaid, and then I'm like, oh, I'll worry about it later. And then I get my paycheck, and I can't buy groceries. So that just adds another layer of stress. So I do that to myself, but <sighs> it's a lot. It seems like even though your work is stressful, you do have a time where you can go and decompress from the stress you have going on at home. Mm -hmm. Yes. How could you categorize your stress and work and your stress and home. How do you deal with both of them? Really, I just push, I just push through. Like, whatever it is, it's just one day at a time, I just push on. No matter how hard it is, no matter how much goes on or how much stress I have, I just take a breath and I just keep pushing. Just keep, the tomorrow's a new day. That's kind of how I look at it. Um, but 
you know, I have a couple kids in college, a couple kids in high school, everybody's in different places in their life, so it's hard to be there for every single one of them all the time. Yeah, I understand, and it's great that you recognize that. Tell me about your kids in school and how you handle that stress. Um, so my oldest child at home is in college. He also works a couple jobs and you know, he's come a long way, so I feel like I don't really have to worry about him as much now. And then my daughter's in school with her uh, being a single mom, too, and that's hard because I'm constantly having to encourage her and remind her and things that she needs to get done when she's some days barely only able to take care of her kids and herself. Um, and then I have two in high school that have a rigorous football schedule that I'm, we're back and forth and scrimmages and games and training and throughout the whole summer. So as I, we, we just never get a, we just never get a moment. Like there's barely even a day within the week where everybody is just in chill mode and nobody has anything to do because everybody always has something to do. <laughs> so it, that just adds to the stress. I understand that, and it's great that you recognize how stressful it is, even if you do enjoy mom life and all of your children, it is still very stressful. So it's great yeah. that you can recognize your overwhelming sensation and a burnout. During a portion of your life, it sounds very stressful. How do you manage that? Do you have people who you can turn to and talk to and people that will help you whenever you need it? I mean, yeah, I have a big group of friends and a lot of extended family, um, some family that's even local. Um, but I do have a really good group of friends uh, in my town. Um, you know, a lot of our back and forth supporting each other is just sending memes back and forth, but we do kind of try to make time every couple weeks. It's, sometimes it's longer than others, but every three weeks or so, we try to go out for dinner and drinks and just talk and, you know, vent on all of our frustrations about our kids and our uh, significant others and what's going on with us um, just to decompress. But I also have a really supportive family that I can call up any of them anytime. I can call my mom and she may be in Florida, but I can call her anytime and be like, oh, this is what's going on. And she's always going to encourage me. Um, so I do have a support system, but it's still at the end of the day, everything comes down on me as the mom so I don't know if I could do anything differently in that room um I do feel supported I, it's just I'm still stressed well it sounds to me like you have a very great group of supportive people to turn mm -hmm. to when you're feeling burnt out and stressed tell me how you manage those relationships with people even with your busy schedule um I mean, I try to keep communication open with my friends, um, not necessarily on the daily because I'm, I'm a terrible text back person sometimes, but I'll be like, oh, I hadn't texted my friend Yolanda in like a whole week. Let me text her and see what's going on. We'll have our back and forth conversation. So I, I probably could do better as a friend reaching out to my friends, but when I'm feeling overwhelmed with everything going on with me, I don't always like to be the first person to reach out, I guess. So, there's that. Well, I'm sure your friends understand with everything you're going through. Oh, yeah. You're not going to text back every second of the day. Maybe they still are supportive of that. And it sounds to me like even if you guys have gone a week without texting, whenever you guys text, the connection is still there. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. Tell me about your friendships and how are your friends and how you feel that. I mean, we've we've all been friends for several years. We all have a common ground of being football moms, and we all have multiple kids, and we have lots of boys, and so we ha have that common ground, which is the basis of our friendships. Um, but I know I can call any of them at any time if anything's going down or going south, or I need them to swoop in and help and they would just like I would for them so I know they're there it's just you know 
are they going to be there to come and clean my house at the end of the day when I've had a rough day and I'm tired and frustrated? No, but can I text them, call them, say, hey, come meet me on my front porch for an hour? Yes. I'll I understand motherhood is a lot, and at some points we seem to get lost in motherhood, but who are you as a person? Outside of being a mom? Sometimes I don't know. I I don't know who I am outside of being a mom. Um, I do, I have the last couple of years tried to culminate some of my own interests, um, like, I like doing crafty stuff. I have a newfound love of plants that I have found in the last couple of years. My kids like to call my house the jungle because I have so many plants. But also, I feel like that's more of me trying to take care of other things instead of me. But I do enjoy gardening, being outside, working on my house, um, DIY kind of things. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like other things that I enjoy doing that I don't have time to do, like I, I enjoy painting, I enjoy reading, writing. I used to read but lots of books, and but I just feel like I can't even sit down and read five pages of a book without getting interrupted. Um, so I just don't do it. Um, I, you know, I find joy in the little things like. My my love of coffee and just being outside in the yard and being with my kids, but it is hard to know who I am. And sometimes I'm getting to the age now where my kids are getting older and they are going to start leaving. Who? What am I going to do when they leave? What? Who am I when they're not there? So. Well, it sounds great to hear that even though you are absorbed in motherhood all day, you have found hobbies and interests that mm -hmm. you love. How do you smart about those and how you incorporate those into your home life and don't think you're supposed to be your children? Sometimes. Um, I mean, most of my kids know that I like doing like DIY stuff, and we just bought a house not too long ago that needs some work and some upgrades and stuff, so one of my teenage boys likes to work. Grandkids come out and pick up a paint scraper, and they try to do stuff with me, too. Um, I also make um, epoxy acrylic covered cups, um, so that's fun for me to do and kind of relaxing. And I've taught some of my kids how to do that, too, and they like to get involved with that. Um, you know, pulling weeds and planting flowers. I have Tried to teach my grandkids how to plant seeds and water the garden and look when we have, you know, a pepper pop up on one of our plants or things like that so they can see it. So I try to incorporate them in some of my hobbies as well to maybe instill in them the things that they could enjoy later on in life or remember that they did those things with me. Well, it sounds great to hear, and I did, I want to emphasize on the fact that you said you do epoxy cups. I don't, I'm not sure if you realize it or not, but you said that painting is one of your mm -hmm. new hobbies, mm -hmm. and you made your board or painting, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. but epoxy painting, that is painting, so it's yep. a hobby, you know, yep. they need some time to sit out an easel and right. paint, but you can right. cut it. It's one yeah. Of your hobbies. Yeah. It is a. It's definitely an artistic expression, and it's able. I'm, I'm able. It's an outlet for me to be able to do that. Um. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, I I, I do try to carve out time for my hobbies and include my kids and grandkids in those hobbies, even though they may not enjoy them. In the short time that we've been talking, I've heard you say that you're a single mom of six with three grandchildren, mm -hmm. and you hardly make any time for yourself, but you do have a great support group for when things get really hard and for when you're burnt out and overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Why don't we try to make a plan that you stick to where you commit, like, maybe 10, 12 hours a week where you just focus on yourself? Seems like a lot. 10 to 12 hours a week. 
I feel like I struggle just to even get 30 minutes where I concentrate on me in a week or a day. Um, so I don't know if 12 hours a week is realistic for me to be able to concentrate on me, but maybe I could, maybe I could commit to like 30 minutes a day um, to start. Because like I said, sometimes it is hard for me to just turn everybody off and just concentrate on me. Um, but I probably could do 30 minutes a day where I set aside that this is my time. To me, it sounds like your biggest issue with dealing with yourself is that you have the guilt, even if all of your children say they're not, you do feel guilty mm -hmm. for giving to yourself. Yeah. Do you think that there are your things that you could do to maybe ease the feelings of guilt? Um, I mean, maybe I, I could maybe have just a conversation with the kids and let them know that I'm trying to implement this so that I can take better care of me. Um, maybe have a, a dialogue conversation with them so they realize that I need that time by myself and tell them that I am going to do this and be on the, do not disturb for this amount of time and I will be there when they, you know, at the end of that time, I'll be there for their needs if they need me because they always need me. Um, so I could probably do that and approach it with the kids. I do think that is a very good plan. Maybe you could take your nine-year-old out and then you could also take yourself out and have a talk to him and be mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm a little burnt out as well. I get that you need me, but I need me as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could not text for this amount of time. Your siblings are at home and can help you if you need it, but I need to take care of me as well. I can try. <laughs> he, he's probably the least accepting one of me needing my time than the rest. Um, but I can definitely try, try that, and we can maybe talk about it in our next session, how that went. Okay. <laughs> Well, we are getting close to our time today. I'm glad that we've been able to sit down and formulate a plan that you can take better care of yourself while also still meeting the goals of your children. I look forward to meeting with you next week to see how everything is going for you. Okay. Thank you for listening. Okay.